Hi everyone, I am going to show you how to install this NOW CLI and how you can start making components in the new agent workspace. So bear with me here, I am taking you through this tutorial on a computer that had absolutely nothing set up on it for this type of thing. So that was kind of my purpose in this is I want you to see some of the problems that you might run into. And uh, I think at the end, I kind of completely fumble at one point, but Hopefully this tutorial helps you, and let's go to the computer. Okay guys, so I actually, the only thing I have right now is Visual Studio Code, and that is a very easy and simple program to download. I'd recommend downloading that if you don't already have it. Now, I don't have any of the other dependencies to do this, so I'm gonna start with uh, Node.js. I'm just gonna Google Node.js, and I'm going to download the most recent version. Looks like, uh, this one here, 14.16, is the one I'm going to want to go with. So that is going to go ahead and download. Once I have that downloaded, I'm going to open it up. And I'm just going to follow the prompts. This is pretty straightforward, except the agreement. Uh, I would say just install it where it wants you to. And then keep going, keep going and automatically install necessary tools. Uh, I don't think you need this, so uh, just go ahead and skip that. Don't check that box. I did install that on one occasion and I've yet to see a reason to have it, so I don't think you actually need it for this. Okay, and so once that's recorded or uh, downloaded, you can just push finish. And then you're going to need Python. So I'm just going to Google Python. And I think 3.9 is the most up to date. Let's just go ahead and find that. Download Python. Okay, so this is on a Windows machine, and I'm going to be downloading that this 3.9.2 release for a Windows machine. That is not what I wanted to do. There you go, 3.9.2, uh, that's what you want. And as soon as that is downloaded, you can go ahead and run this. And so this, this part is kind of important. You do want to add it uh, to your path, and this is where it wants to put it. I don't know if I actually want it there. Um, actually, that's fine. It can be there. And I'm just going to install now. So, this is going to take a little bit to install. Okay, so once it's finished, you'll see this thing that says Disable Path Length Limit. Uh, and that is going to happen to you. So go ahead and disable that. But you are going to have to check something, and that is that your Python path is actually set up successfully. Um, and then, so there's a nice little guide I can pull up for that. Um, set Python path windows. And this is, you know, pretty easy. Python geek, you're just going to go start, run, and then do sys dm.cpl and you go to advanced and you're going to go to environment variables okay so you're going to see all this stuff now what you care about is the one called path right here and you see node.js is here you see all this other stuff but I don't see python so we need to add that we're going to do new, and it just wants me to insert something. So at this point, open up your file browser, and go on over to just your local disk C, and go ahead and make your way to users, and then your user account. And then if you're not already doing this, you're going to have to go to view, and there's a see this checkbox hidden items you're gonna need to click that in order to see this app data so go in there local and then we are going to find uh, the Python it's under programs I believe yep right here programs 
Python, and then Python 39 is what we want. We can just go ahead and go into that folder. And then you click a whole bunch of times here, highlight this, copy it, and now go back to your path and add this little path here. Okay, and actually I think you need to make this your top for now. Push OK and push OK. All right, so now that we're done with that, we have Python, we have um, Node.js, we can start talking about, there is one more thing that you're gonna wanna get, but you can do that on the command line. And let's actually see if it gives me problems. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go CMD and we're gonna open up command prompt. Okay, so this is command prompt. I'm just in my uh, user folder, but we can go ahead and start going through the tutorial. So the next thing you're gonna need to do is, is just your first command is npm install. And uh, I believe there's actually one before that. Sorry, node-v is the first thing, node-v. Okay, so that is just confirming that we have Node installed. So now let's use npm to install our uh, ServiceNow CLI. And we're gonna do Paris version, so that's at ServiceNow. And then that would be slash CLI at Paris dash G for global. Okay, and it's gonna go ahead and install this. And this might take a little bit and there might be issues. doing that okay make this a little bit bigger for you guys so you can see and that's the command right there in fact I might even make it bigger than that that's probably big enough Okay, so you can see right here we had an issue that happened up here and this is going to potentially, yes. So this error here, you need to install version of Visual Studio. So let's close this and let's run CMD and administrator. Okay, so this one does take a while. Okay, so eventually this is gonna finish and you should see your command line again. So that's good stuff. This has been installed. So now what we can do is, if you still have the command line go from before, you can just push the up key. Unfortunately, I had to restart to run an administrator, so make sure when you use uh, do your command line you run it as administrator. So I'm just going to retype this npm, whoops, that's not in there quite, npm install at servicenow slash cli at paris and then dash g. Okay, and so this is going to start again, and we are gonna take another shot at this. Let's see if it works. Just to let you guys know, the first time I did this, I ran into the same type of issue with Python, which is how I knew I needed to install Python, and then how I figured out that I needed to, you know, actually 
or set the path correctly like I showed you earlier. Okay, that's normal, that's normal. All right, looks like we're good. So that's good stuff. Basically, we are kind of ready now, but we can test this by doing now dash CLI dash dash version. Okay, so now we see we're at 18.0. That is always good when you get an output like that. Okay, so now we're actually going to start working the project. Again, you do need Visual Studio Code for that. I can't download that. I mean, I can show you basically how to download it. It's just, uh, just type download Visual Studio Code. And Microsoft would be very happy for you to just go and download this if you know you have Windows. You just click this, you'll get the installer. It's very straightforward. Okay, so at this point, we now actually need an instance to connect to. So this is sort of a problem because I don't actually have an instance right now to connect to. So to get an instance, you go to developer.service.now.com and you would just, you need to make an account here if you don't already have one. I should have one here. Uh, let's do, let's see if I have a, let's just do this one. Uh, no, let's, I'm just going to use this account. And next. And then I might have to guess at my password here. Hey, I guessed it right the first time. Okay, so you're going to go to, and I'll make this a little bigger, so I'll actually, you know, it was big enough. Let's request an instance. And we're going to choose Paris since that aligns. You know, I am tempted to choose, uh, choose Quebec, but let's just do Paris for now. I'm going to request this instance. And in a few seconds, I will actually have uh, a full instance at my disposal. And uh, there we go. So here's my instance. This, uh, this URL is going to be important, as is this uh, username and, and password. Uh, let's go ahead and open it. And I think it's just going to auto log me in without asking me to change my password. And all things considered that it's written right over here, I think I don't really need to change it for now. So that should be fine. So that's all loaded up. Let me zoom in on this a little so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so this is our ServiceNow instance, uh, out of the box Paris, very good. So now we are going to need to try to connect now CLI to it. So let's see. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to go back to the command line. We are going to make it not so big so that we can actually see two things at once. And we're going to type some commands. Uh, the first one is going to be just now-cli. And this is kind of what you're going to be using from now on to interface with this new program. It's now-cli. Then login, we're going to do dash dash username. And that is just um, admin and then dash 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 password Oop, rod password and uh, then the password which I am going to need to copy because it is I'm not typing that in by hand okay and so then we are, are going to do uh, dash dash host and now we need the host of our instance here so uh, can I grab that come on give it to me there you go got it Okay, paste that right there, and all things, if they go well, I will actually be able to connect to this. Okay, it has verified my instant version. You might get a warning that says it doesn't recognize the instant version in giant red letters making you think something's wrong. Uh, I have had that happen and everything still seems to work just fine, so don't worry about that too much. Okay, so next we're going to need to create a project. So. For this, you're going to need to create a folder somewhere. So I'm just going to do it in C drive for simplicity's sake. Uh, let's just go C colon and let's do a new folder. And I'm going to call this test project. All right, go ahead and get in there. And I'm going to copy this. I could probably type it. So what you're going to do in Windows is you're going to do CD and then the directory. And that's going to change, as you can see over here, that changes the directory we're actually in. And now we're going to do now-cli project dash dash name. And now we have to give it a name. Now, I believe you really are supposed to 
use the scope at the beginning of the name. So to get that, and this is, you know, I'm used to doing this in not a developer instance, so this is going to be a bit of an experience for me too. Uh, let's go to the instance and go to my company applications. Let's see if we can find a scoped application. There's got to be a scoped application. Uh, let's just Google this real quick. Find instance scope qualifier service now. Because I think it's just that number. I'm, honestly, I think I'm pretty sure it's just that number. So let's let's go uh, with that. I could do stats to see if that has it. I'm not actually sure, but I'm yeah, so I have dev. That's the instance name. Let's see if I have scope. No, don't have scope. That's okay. I'm just gonna assume it's the number because I'm pretty darn sure it is. So that would be this number here, that ten two zero eight two. So let's just copy that and ah, okay, copy that. And then here I'm gonna go ahead and make this big again. And I'm gonna call it this my number dash test. And so now it's going to build this for me. Uh, oh, name after scope must start with a letter. So it might be dev and the number. Let's do that. Name after scope. Well it definitely does start with a letter. So I'm gonna do this. Oh, well, let's push the up arrow to get that back. And then I'm going to do dev. Uh, again, I'm not really sure that that's the scope name, but let's just try this. Okay, it looks like it did create the scope, and the scope is different, and that's fine. We'll just deal with that. Uh, so, But we do know for future reference that number is the scope, and we may have to deal with that. Um, I don't know. Do what you want here. That's, that's just asking if you'll send data to them. Uh, okay, so this component's been created, and now what that means is we can take a like little uh, hike to our Visual Studio code, which is a little maybe too, well, no, I think this is pretty well zoomed in. And we're gonna go File, Open Folder. So now let's go to Local Disk C and find that folder that we made, and then do Select Folder. And yeah, don't save anything. I don't think I have anything valuable there. Okay, so now you can see it's, lo it's loaded in this, pr this test project, this folder, and this is everything in the actual thing. Now there's a couple files in here that are important, and there's a couple things I have to do. Looks like package.json is already here. This is where um, my dependencies will be. Now I don't necessarily have to type the dependency in here on a lot of things. I can I can actually import it using npm. Uh, then you're going to have, uh, well, this is really the big file that is, you know, this folder here is your, your big folder. Uh, this index.js, this is where you will write your code. And this particular thing here, this const view equals div div, that is what's going to allow you to eventually upload these things. So before we get too far into that, you also have your style. CSS. You can see it's importing some. You can do work in that as well. You can do some SCSS. So let's just uh, write something in here. Hi, and let's do the classic hello world. This is Mark. Okay, so pretty good here. We shouldn't need to change anything else here, but there is an issue that's known that we might have to deal with uh, involving the scope name, and we will see if that actually is a problem in Paris. So let's um, go ahead, and I think I saved it, right? So we're not just going to push this straight to our instance. What we're actually going to do is we're going to go back to the command line, and there is a test command we can run that will allow us to actually, oh, well, there's one thing we, we need to do first. We need to install the dependencies on this project. So you saw a bunch of stuff there. That's kind of what ServiceNow calls the scaffolding. Now what you have to do is when you are in that folder and make sure you are in that folder, that, that folder that you created the, the, for your project, do npm install. And uh, there are some memes out there about um, node modules that I want to see if I can find while we install this. So this is going to take a little while, and that is because um, Node modules are big, and this is, uh, you know, this type of JavaScript is kind of dependency hell. Uh, so node modules, you can see they're kind of just chugging away. I don't think we're going to have any issues here. 
So while we do this, I'm going to show you some of the um, node modules memes. So this is one of them. And uh, you got the sun, you got a neutron star, you got a black hole, and then you have node modules. Those are the heaviest things in the universe. And there's another one that I really like that I'm not finding. I'm just going to put There it is. Okay. So let's see if I can get this. That is not very good. Let's just zoom in. Okay, so this is a good one too. And that is Legendary Apollo Project Programmer Margaret Hamilton next to printout of her node modules directory uh, listing her first Hello World React app. And so that is sort of the joke that you'll notice what I have done uh, here. And we're actually starting to get through it. We're almost done. But it might take significantly longer for you. This is a pretty fast machine. But uh, just to write Hello World uh, in what we're doing here, we have to do all of this work. And that is sort of uh, the joke there. And you're going to see all this stuff is normal. We're doing good. OK, and we're finished here. So now we can actually talk about starting to test our project. And I really like how this is set up where we do not actually have to push it to service not to test it at all. We can test it using what's called localhost. Uh, for anyone who's never hosted a server locally, that just means you're basically running a server off your own machine and it makes it really easy to test things and really fast. So let's do now dash CLI develop. And what that does is it, it basically does two things. It, one, it, it compiles your code and two, it, it starts running the server and you're gonna see that here. So it's going to do running component locally. It may ask for administrator access, so definitely provide that. And it's going to take a second to do this, which is a little bit unfortunate. But the good thing about this, and I'm going to show you this, is that you can actually save your code and it will recompile on the fly, which makes testing incredibly fast. Now, it's not quite there yet. And this, this, point does, uh, this part does take a little bit. So this is taking a really long time, so I'm going to terminate this and see. I might have to do npm init. And it's just going to give me a few questions. I'm going to jump through them. And then just yes. And then let's try the other command again. Now CLI develop. See if it does a little bit better this time. Okay, that's it. So you do have to do npm init. Don't forget that step like I just did. And you're going to see that it says compile successfully. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go to our browser, which loaded up without me. I'm going to show you how to do this, though. To get here in the browser, you just do um, localhost 8081. That's the port that ServiceNow is um, sending this out on. And you can see there is what I wrote. Hello, world. This is Mark. So now watch this. This is pretty cool. I can open up Visual Studio and I can actually make changes to this on the fly. So I can go, um, I can just add a ton of exclamation points. Let's do that. And I'm going to go File, Save and watch what happens here. See, it actually loaded, reloaded itself. And if you look at the command prompt, you'll see it actually compiled again. So this is great and all, and this is so awesome to be able to test your code this way. But um, this is kind of one of the big things I'm excited about is now you can write your code in, in uh, you know, Visual Studio. You can import what you want to and use it. Now, as far as what will be compatible with ServiceNow, I haven't got a, a, like a straight answer on that. But let's just go ahead and move on to um, 
to uh, well to to get out of this control c and then yes which is what i did before to get out of it so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually try to uh, push this and for me to do that I've got to go through a little bit of my documentation here because I skipped way ahead and did this by memory of course so we did um, develop but we really want to deploy right and I believe yeah I think I remember how to do it actually so n or now dash cli deploy and I think dash dash force if you want to actually um, overwrite an existing file, but since I don't need to, I can just deploy it. So it's going to try to contact the instance. That should work okay. Now, the, if there's a big issue that sometimes comes up here, and we'll see if it does or not, that has to do with the naming of um, of the file. And if we hit that, then I can talk you through that hopefully. But if not, then that may be a topic for another video. Okay, so it said it was successful. So now apparently this is in our instance. So now let's go back to our instance. Here we are, right? And we're going to go to uh, just type workspace. And we're going to go to, I think there's like all workspaces right here. So it's out of the box. We just have the one. We're going to click that. And we are going to go to these landing pages here. Now I believe in Paris you, you can do a bit more than this. I know in Quebec you're supposed to be able to, but uh, let's do the default, which we want to set this number here. I think it's gonna make me go, oh, it's gonna make me change scope. So to change scope, uh, go to this developer cog if you haven't already, and just you want to show the application picker. And now I can pull that down. And I think it's agent workspace is the scope that we should be in. So now one thing we want to do is change this value, which I'm just going to go and click on this to change the value. I could do it in the other one, I guess, but I'm doing it in the default. That's what I want to do. So we're going to save that, that I guess. Yeah, right, click Save. So this is great, but we need to actually do the UI Builder here, which I'm not sure if we have. So let me stay on this page. I'm just going to duplicate this tab, and I'm going to go to the... UI Builder. Oh, no, sorry. The plugins. That's the first thing I need. I need to see if this UI Builder plugin is installed. And if it is not, then I may need to install it. And I'm not sure. I know that there is a plugin listed, but I might have to actually install an application for this. I'm, I'm, I don't quite remember. I didn't actually have to do this last time. So let's just do a UI Builder. There it is. It is installed. So I should be able to make this work then. Let me just go to uh, my company application, see if there's something there I'm not doing. So by the way, this is our, this thing you're seeing here, this in development, this is our, um, our thing that we just made. This is our component. So that's one good thing. I'm glad I went here to, uh, so you could see that. Uh, I know I need to get to this. I think I might need to actually back out of this. And I'm just going to go back to workspaces, agent workspace. There it is. OK, so it's just the workspace itself. You go open UI Builder. And it's going to kind of slowly bring this up. Oh, but I realized, I just realized I forgot to do something that is actually important. And you'll see my thing does not show up here. So the reason why is I need to actually edit another one of these files. Uh, this file, I believe it is the actual, now that I've made it, this uh, package.json. Or no, I'm sorry, now uh, UI, this one here. So let's make that a little smaller. So there's all this stuff here. OK, it does have it. Maybe it did upload it, actually. So it looks like the Paris version goes ahead and puts this in for you. Uh, if you if you are in an older version like Orlando, you will actually need to put all this in there. Uh, so let's go back. And here it is right here, my component, right? So I'm going to drag this over here. Um, I just want to put it some. Oh, 
I may have to copy this, yes. So let's create a copy. I'm just going to put no protection, create a copy, because it's not going to let me overwrite the default, which is fine. I, under, I completely understand. So let's just put this, I don't know, uh, let's put it up here, I guess. So as soon as I let that go, I don't think I let that go just right. <laughs> Either that or it's being slow. Let's, uh, uh, let me do it. I'm not sure if I just messed up or something, so let me refresh that. Add component. Oh, you know what it did? I think it left me in the one that I can't. Yeah, let's go. No, I'm in copy. Okay, so add component, my component. Okay, it's letting me try again. So let's just put it right here. Okay, so there you go. Hello world, this is Mark. So let's now go to agent workspace. So to do this, you can just type uh, agent workspace here and you're going to see agent workspace home. That is going to pull you up to the agent workspace. And if all works, so I think I'm on the wrong page though. You know what I think I need to do? I need to go back into this here and I need to make that copy. I think I need to make that the default. Yeah, oh, well that is the default. So did my thing come through? I'm not in the right landing page, I don't think. So, oh, you know what? Zero might not be a valid order because that is not what I want. So let's go back here. Uh, let's go back to our workspace here. I'm gonna make this, um, I'm gonna make this one. Uh, it's gonna make me do that, okay. Uh, ITSM and landing pages, so I gotta change to ITSM landing pages scope to do this. And then I'm gonna set this to, I don't know, 10. Okay, let's update that. And it would be, wait, now I'm back, to, oh, now I'm back to the agent workspace. Okay, so let's go here. Uh, it'd be nice if there was like a preview option so I could skip trying to figure out how to get there. But let's do, that's my local host, don't get too excited. So I see this is my workspace. That's not what I want, I want my page. Uh, but I could just put for now because this isn't working. I may just put this in a different uh, area. Again, I am not used to Paris. I am used to Orlando, and in in Orlando, this this works that way. But let's go. Um, let's go to page management. Maybe that'll do it. No, that didn't do it at all. Uh, pages and if, so, what am I not doing here? I feel like that should be the default landing page, but instead, I think it's this one. Oh, did I not save? That would explain a great many things. Um, okay, that's fine, but I think this, no, that's not what I'm seeing either. I'm seeing this. Oh, I see, I accidentally copied the wrong one. That's my issue. So let's go to the default landing page and let's copy that. And let's make it none, create copy. And now let's do add component, my component. Let's put it up here. I think it looks good there. Okay, and save it and activate it. Activate. Okay, so now if we go back to um, home, I guess, yeah, that should probably work. Okay, and there you go. So now you can see my little thing that I made. It's not super impressive at all. And I'm not going to um, go any further in this video as far as what you need to do, uh, other than to say, uh, mainly is this index.json file. This uses something called JSX, uh, something you're gonna have to study up on, something I'm gonna have to study up on, and this is ServiceNow's own uh, framework. So uh, yeah, so I hope this helps, and uh, yeah, have a good night.